So, like a lot of Legionite content creators, you might have thought I was going to do a video on the Borough match first thing in the morning, and fair enough, it was abysmal, not a good enough performance, but somehow, some way, something more important and more bad for Legionite managed to pop up. I know. Miracle. Somehow they've achieved it. So, for this video, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Normally, you'd expect to follow all of these header banner things that I've got down here, and I'd follow them in a structure, and there'd be a clear script, and I'd know what I'm saying next. But I'm going to approach this one slightly differently. Basically, I've written some very, very big, broad banner things that I'm going to skip by, talk about, and get through. Because Brighton have met the £40 million release clause for Jorginho Ruter, and I'm quite pissed off about it. So, I'm going to start off with what exactly happened, run through the previous bids up until now. Basically, Brighton started the window offering a £29 million offer for Jorginho Ruter, and obviously we said no, because Ruter is worth more than that to us, and worth more than that to anyone who wants to sign him, effectively. Brighton followed that up by saying, OK, fine, you paid £35 million for him in the first place, how about we offer you £35 million now, we'll make it nice and even. And we again said no. And now, finally, we've hit the moment where we've discovered that in Jorginho Ruter's original contract, there was a £40 million release clause. And that means that effectively, Brighton have free reign on the ability to sign Ruter now, which causes pretty big issues. So it brings up a simple question of what exactly happens next. And what happens next is it's basically Georgie's decision. We don't get to reject this bid because it's in Georgie's contract that if we receive a bid of £40 million, we have to tell him and we have to accept it. And then it becomes his choice. Does he want to play at Brighton, who are consistently qualifying for Europe, playing in the Premier League, one of the best places for a young talent to play at? Or does he want to stay at Leeds United? who are increasingly proving themselves to be a little bit of a basket case. Not good enough. And I'll be honest, if I'm Georgie, the decision feels a bit obvious. He'd get a pay rise over at Brighton. That's nice. He'd get a high level of football at Brighton. Also nice. He'd play probably week in, week out like he does at Leeds. He'd get more exposure, could get his way into the national team, could play for the Olympic side next time around because he didn't even make that this time. And the thing that stings the most is that there is a reason that this hurts more. Because you, I'm sure you've seen the image that I put as the thumbnail, probably because you clicked on it. The amount that it meant to him at the end of that playoff final, the fact that he was just in tears. And now this new information makes me think that maybe he knew there was a release clause. Maybe he knew that the club hadn't done enough to keep hold of him. And maybe he knew that he was probably on his way out. And it would take a lot for the club to persuade him to stay. Absolutely, I completely understand that from his point of view. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to complain at a footballer doing what is right for their career, especially when they give what Georgie did, did last season. And on the subject of season, oh shit, we need to say what it means for this season. If we're not able to keep Georgie, we've already lost Somerville, who, insane last year, 22 goals, bunch of assists. Georgie, 16 assists. And I think eight goals, something like that. It's in that region. Mid-20s for goal contributions. 50-something goal contributions we've lost between those two players. And then you consider that we've also lost Archie. And I thought some of them going, fine, we can deal with that. Gray going, fine, we can deal with that. I'd rather not, but okay. But now we desperately, desperately need to make replacements, especially if Georgie does go. And then there is a big question on who exactly is to blame for all of this. And in terms of the contract, in terms of the release clause, there is one person to put it on, and that's Victor Orta. Because he signed the original contract that Jorginho Rutte was signed on. I remember he might have been the last Orta signing, or second last. It might have been McKenney. But either way, McKenney didn't pay off. And Jorginho Rutte, fantastic player. Why have you let him leave for just a £5 million profit when you thought his ceiling was through the roof? When you thought he was an insanely good player with so much potential, what part in Victor Otter's head said, no, you know what, a release clause that is very achievable for a Premier League club? Senseless madness. But Victor is not here anymore. 
we can't hold him to account. The people we can hold to account are the 49ers. The 49ers being the ones who were definitely aware of this clause by now because they own the club. They own each and every one of these players and the contracts that bind them to the club. So they will have been throughout this window completely aware that Georgie had a release clause whilst he was in this division. And we've not acted yet. Having sold Somerville and Gray and Kamara and Cresswell, we've had plenty of cash come in. And I thought we were working at a completely okay pace because we were working carefully, getting towards the targets that we wanted. Because I wasn't aware that there was this trap door underneath not only a fun, fantastic footballer that performed almost every single time we saw him and brought genuine joy. He plays in a way that he gives a shit about the game and the club. I wasn't aware there was this trap door underneath him that Brighton could just pull a switch on and then suddenly George has gone. Of course, he could in theory still stay, but I'm not super confident on that one. I'm not sure if anyone will be. And this is why I'm now looking at the transfer window and saying, we needed to move faster. We needed to be ready for the thing that we knew was coming. Because Brighton had made two bids, 29-35. They'd evidently said, okay, we can up this bid more and more and more. And what did we do? We sat by and haven't signed anyone yet to cover for that potential. And we've already lost a winger. We already needed to replace a winger with someone skillful and tricky that could do stuff. And we've not yet. And this is why, with this news, it's getting very, very worrying. If we can keep Georgie, wonderful. But even if we do, there's a bit of a feeling of, why weren't we ready? But what feels inevitable now. And it's genuinely concerning. And what this means for the rest of the window is also quite scary. Because it means that clubs around us know... We need to make signings urgently. Clubs all around the world will look at us and go, they've sold the most value of players in the entirety of Europe this season. They've got cash, and that'll make us making deals harder in and of itself, which is nuts. We'll have gotten ourselves into a place where we desperately need more signings, but you know what? To get those signings, well done. You've got to pay even more money. Not a good place to be in. It's a place that I quite desperately hope that we get through, but I'm not super confident. If Georgie does go, and lots of places are reporting that it's just a matter of personal terms and they will almost certainly be, almost certainly be agreed, we need to act like that within the day, ideally. And I'm not super confident that we do that. And at the end of the day, Georgie probably gone because Brighton have met that clause. Somerville gone for 34 million. Gray gone for 40 million. In terms of incomings, we have not even nearly matched that in the slightest. Sure, we've passed PSR, well done. But that is the bare minimum when we're at this stage. <sighs> Don't like being annoyed, but here we are. Either way. That's what I think. Let me know what you think as per in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like if you did. Sorry, it's not the most fun of subject matters. Nothing that we can really do to help that. Like, subscribe, become a channel member. It's 99p a month. All that fun stuff. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you later. And first thing in the morning, I've got all the fun of a doctor's appointment. What a fucking day. Ta-ra.